We got some bad news. Shavkat Rachmanov's fight is off with Jeff Neal because Jeff Neal got injured. And Shavkat's been saying that everybody's turning him down. Nobody wants to fight him. And they were supposed to be on that January 14 card, which are the next fights. It's headlined by Gaslam versus Imovov. So does it really need Shavkat on the card? That's the question here because just like him, Hamza Shemaev is also talking about how nobody wants to fight him. Everybody's turning him down. Blah Muhammad and Paulo Costa both came out and said that's completely false. They've been calling him out. They've been wanting to fight him. And Shafgat's in such a difficult position where he's even willing to fight Brian Barbarina right now. And that makes absolutely no sense for him to take besides the fact that he wants to fight in January. And he's kind of fed up that all these guys are turning him down. But when we're talking about real challenges for both fighters, who is their next real challenge? And honestly, I think there are a lot of options for both guys. Shafgat and Hamza, in my opinion, are the most interesting fighters on the whole division. They're the future of the division, they're younger than most of the other contenders, they're both undefeated and have finished almost all of their fights. Hamza has one decision win between them. If it was in a perfect world, I would have Shavka and Hamza fight each other. I think it's the best fight in the welterweight division. I don't think there's anything better there. For sure gonna be high level, highly skilled, and someone will most likely get finished in a five round fight. I mean, just imagine how the fight will look. Two ginormous welterweights going at it, where you're definitely going to see some of the holes getting exposed in Hamzat's overall striking defense. Shafgat's more of a counter striker, and Hamza is uber aggressive, so that style is really going to mix with each other. Going to create a lot of action, where Shafgat's going to be looking for a lot of jabs, a lot of check left hooks, leg kicks from a distance, and some spinning kicks when distance is created between them two. Hamza's going to look to punch his head off, maybe trying to stick behind a jab more than before, but remember, these two guys are roughly the same size, so he doesn't have that same kind of reach advantage over other smaller welterweights like he does against Shavkat, right? Shavkat's gonna be able to parry the jab and counter with his own, just like he did against the long Neil Magny, parrying his punches, countering them with his own. It's difficult to counter a longer fighter's jab with your own, and that's exactly what Shavkat was doing to Neil. If he could do that to Neil, I think he can also do it to Hamza, but I do ultimately think that Hamza is the superior wrestler. I think his chain wrestling capabilities will eventually be able to get Shavkat to the ground but I don't know if he's gonna be able to keep him down there they're both amazing grapplers but I do overall think that Hamza has an advantage in that area even though it would be heavily resisted and that's how you see it turn into a well-rounded fight where Hamza's gonna have to use his wrestling in order to get some things out there and probably mix up his boxing behind that maybe start the fake takedowns to go up for uppercuts as Shafka starts to sprawl for the takedown. But at the same time, whenever Hamza is moving forward, he doesn't move his head. Actually, Shafka doesn't either. So it favors both fighters, Shafka's left hook and jab versus Hamza's jab and right straight. The only difference between the two fighters when it comes to their defensive striking is that Shafka moves his feet very well. He doesn't move his head too much. He needs time in order to feel out your strikes and feel out when he has to move his head but his footwork is much better than Hamzat's and that's where I can see Hamza overextending with some big punch and oftentimes you do see him lean forward with his punches just like he did against Gilbert Burns and from there you could definitely see some of the counter shots from Shafkat landing if he ever starts to back up Hamza Shemaev you will see Shafkat's confidence start to grow and him throwing out some more head kicks, spinning kicks, building on to his momentum, but he always has to watch out from the single leg takedown. Hamza has some of the fastest takedowns I've ever seen, and if anybody can stuff them as quickly as he shoots, it could be someone like Shavkat Rachmanov. I don't think it's Shavkat, but due to his overall grappling skill that most of the other welterweights don't have, he, he is one of the only guys that could defend it. You do have Gilbert Burns, but then when you see guys like Kamaru Usman, Colby Covington, and some of the better wrestlers of the division, they don't have that overall grasp of grappling like Shavka and Hamza do. It's an awesome fight, and I wish, I wish it would happen, but we're going to have to be realistic here. It's probably not going to happen. Why would it? Why would it right now happen? I understand that Hamza just fought Kevin Holland. Shafka is a threat to his run, but fighting Kevin Holland was as well, right? He runs the risk of being clipped at any moment. Yes, he has a pure wrestling advantage, and it seemingly is an easy win for him, but there is a risk there. But the point is that Hamza is willing to take the risk. And now that him and Shafka both don't have an opponent, and nobody else seemingly wants to fight them, why not fight each other? But let's go down some more realistic options for the two fighters. As for Hamza Shemaev, I think he has more options 
even though he's the one that says that nobody wants to fight him, I think he has more options than Shafkat does because he is willing to fight in two different divisions. Firstly, we have Blal Muhammad. Blal Muhammad is another top five fighter right below Hamza in the rankings at number four. We do have Colby Covington, which should actually be the most logical fight for Hamza next in order to determine who fights for the belt after Usman. And I know there's rumors about Usman pulling out and stuff, but Wonderboy is the one that said that. And then he came out later and clarified that people were taking it out of context. Wonderboy, you rascal, trying to give us all a heart attack. Hamza also can go up in middleweight and fight Paulo Costa, who is having troubles with his contracts. The thing is, I don't see how Paulo Costa would take a fight with Hamza if he's not going to take a fight with Robert Whitaker, because it's not about the opponent. It's about what he's getting paid, and he's going to get paid the same amount against either guy. So why would he fight Hamza, but not Robert Whitaker, besides the fact that they have beef with each other, right? Well, let's throw that in there as well. Paulo Costa could also fight Hamza as a logical option for Hamza to go up to middleweight before fighting for any kind of title. Or if he wants to step up in competition in middleweight and fight probably the best fighter up there, he can go up against Whitaker because Whitaker doesn't have an opponent. If I was Hamzat's manager, if I was in his corner, I would stay away from Bobby Knuckles. Stay away from the gamer, man. That guy is the most difficult matchup for Hamzat in welterweight and middleweight. So how I'd run this is Kobe Covington is the number one logical option for Hamza. Number two, I would say is Blal Muhammad. Number three, I'll say is Robert Whitaker. Number four, I'll actually put Shafkat Rachmanov because Paulo Costa might turn it down due to his contract again. So number five would be Paulo Costa. That's the order of opponents from most logical to least logical for Hamza Shemaev at the moment. And now let's run Shafkat Rachmanov's options. With Jeff Neal pulling out and Shavkat's number 10, he wants to fight up in the rankings, which he absolutely should. The guy seems like a top 5 caliber fighter already, so him fighting guys around number 10 seems ridiculous to me. I mean, he's just going to run through them. Who is the most logical option for Shavkat Rachmanov? Okay, this is just for him. In his perspective, the guy that he would want to fight the most and is up in the rankings. We know the business model sometimes where they want older guys to get beat by the younger future stars. Steven Waterboy Thompson should be the number one fighter on Shavkat's list even though I personally don't want to see it. So Wonderboy is number six. He's even higher than Jeff Neal. He beat Jeff Neal. Shavka would want Wonderboy more than anyone else right now. For number two, scrap the Neil Magny fight. Have Shavka fight Gilbert Burns. Give him the same challenge that Hamza had. And with a win over Gilbert Burns, which is a very tough one, that is not going to be easy. I think Shavka does better against Burns than Hamza did due to how patient he is, how much of a sniper he is from a distance, and won't make the same kind of mistakes that Hamza did. He's a lot more composed in there. The more composed you make a fight against Burns, the worse Burns performs. Number three, I would say is Blal Muhammad, who is ranked number four, so it makes sense for Shavkat to want to fight him, but it makes no sense for Bilal to fight Shavkat. The guy just fought Sean Brady, who is lower than he is, so why fight another fighter ranked below him? You usually get one of those, and then you're going up. Number four, I would say, is Hamza Shemaev, who is kind of in a similar position as Bilal, but with the fact that I don't think the organization will want that fight right now, I think they want that to brew a little bit more. Even though that's the fight I want to see the most, it doesn't really make much sense to put it on right now. Because let's be honest, Hamza for Shavkat now would be amazing, but how much better would it be? If they were to fight for the belt one day, or they fight as top five contenders, that would be much better. But I do believe they are both top five caliber right now, whether they have that number next to their name or not. But we need some proof, right? We need to see if Shafka really is on that level. And I think the only way we're going to know that is if he fights Gilbert Burns. And it's a shame because Burns is in a fight that should probably not be happening. He only took the Neil Magny fight because no one else was open, no one else was available, and no one wanted to fight him too. Many fighters apparently dodged him, but now with Shafka being open, maybe not for the January card, but I hope they could put Shafka versus Gilbert Burns and maybe have Neil Magny fight someone else. But as we know, that's not usually how things go. So I can't wait to see who these two fight next, what's in store for them, and which out of these opponents is going to be the real next challenge.